This is the governor's council chambers, where it's the governor's office is right through this door, and the lieutenant governor's office is right around the corner. And this is where we have a lot of meetings. Sometimes we have the governor with certain legislative issues we're involved in. Sometimes press conferences are held here. But the primary purpose of this, as I said, is the governor's counselor office. And this is where the governor counselors in Massachusetts, we have sort of an antiquated system of appointing judges where the governor will nominate someone and the governor's council, not the Senate or a committee, but the governor's counselors. Uh, Colonel Tom Foley is the governor's counselor in Worcester County, a good friend of mine. He sits in this chamber and they debate the qualities of each candidate that's nominated by the governor for a judgeship and they vote up or down. So that is the system we have and this is the room where they meet in. Usually every Wednesday they come in here and they vote on and they have the candidates here and they get asked questions and these are the hearing rooms. So this is a, a very interesting room and a very well utilized room inside the governor's office. So we're heading just down through the governor's and lieutenant governor's offices. These are their office space, chief of staff, support staff all throughout here. Hey guys, how are you today? And then you went to the second room, which is lieutenant governor's office, which I said I feel is as nice as the governor's office. And as you know, this is where, this is where Tim Murray is uh, presiding right now. And again, Tim has a day where his calendar doesn't allow him to be here. As the governor was out in Springfield, Tim is around the area doing various events. But this is where he sits and conducts his business. And as I said, you can see from what you compare that this has uh, you know, a lot of similarities to the governor's office and in many ways is just as nice. So uh, I've had a number of times to be in here, sit down with Lieutenant Governor, uh, whether it be Lieutenant Governor Healy or Murray, uh, just talking about issues that are important to you. And Jim uh, Leary, a former representative from West Boylston, is the chief of staff of Lieutenant Governor and a great friend of mine. Uh, and they do really look out for us here in Worcester and Central Mass. So, it's great to have a chance just to come in and film in the lieutenant governor's office as well as the governor's for folks back home who've probably never been in here before. One other thing to point out here, the lieutenant governor has a, uh, a portrait or a drawing of a, the three-decker he grew up in in Worcester, and it says the three-decker lined streets of the city that I love, uh, Worcester, Tim Murray, November 7th of 2006. And um, that was after, just after he, I believe, was elected to be lieutenant governor. And I find a kinship I have with Tim in that sense, lieutenant governor, and that I also grew up in a three-decker in Worcester up on Tower Street until I moved back to Holden and lived, uh, built a house on my grandparents' land on Newell Road in Holden. But before that, I spent the first uh, eight years of my life living in a three-decker in Worcester as the lieutenant governor. So interesting time uh, and nice to have that connection with them as well. And that's a beautiful picture. This is the uh, outside of the Senate chamber at the, at the uh, State House, and we're going to get a chance just to run in and just film here. This is there are two branches in the state government. You've seen the executive. In the legislative branch, we have the Senate and the House. In the Senate, we have 40 members of the Senate, and in my uh, State House district, where I'm the only state rep for the seven towns I represent, we actually have three uh, state senators who sit in this room and uh, we work with. Senator Harry Chandler represents uh, Holden and Princeton and Paxton. Um, Senator Steve Brewer represents Rutland, Hubbardston, and Ocam. Uh, and Senator Antonioni, at the present time, represents Westminster and Sterling. But that election just was uh, just is over. He's not running for election, and Senator Jen Flanagan will now be representing Westminster and Sterling. This is where they will come and sit and do their uh, legislative duties as elected officials. Uh, as you're filming up there, you can see that this is actually the actual dome of the Beacon Hill is above the Senate chambers. And it's interesting to note that where the dome is, is where the official designation is. Whenever you see a sign, a highway sign, or you see a road map and it says how many miles it is to Boston, like for example, town of Holden is usually considered around 45 miles to Boston. This is where the actual designation is for the final uh, spot in Boston. So everything's exactly from the distance from the Beacon Hill uh, Gold Dome. And what I find interesting in the Senate chamber, there are 40 members of the House Senate as I uh, may have mentioned. You can see in this room, it's much smaller than the House chamber, which you're going to see. This, as you see, each chair is slightly different in height from each other. The reason is that each senator is at the same eye level. So obviously, if I was to ever be elected to a state senate position, I'd probably be sitting on the floor. But uh, if I was not, I assume my seat would be lowered dramatically, so I would be eye level with many of the other senators. So as you can see, the seats are all different. That's the reason. And then the, uh, the front up there, that's where the Senate president sits. 
and as I said, they're co-equal branch of government. So the Senate has the same authority and powers that the House of Representatives have. They're a smaller branch, and Therese Murray is the first woman to be uh, the Senate president. So that's a very proud day in Massachusetts history, political history, that Therese Murray is now the president. She sits up there, she bangs the gavel, and uh, they, they do their legislation in here as we do ours in the House. So um, this is really the essence of what they have going on here in the Senate. And uh, we'll just take a look around the other parts of the chambers and then we'll go over to the House. You are now looking at what we have is the Senate reading room. And this is directly across the hall from the Senate chambers. And what we have in here is this is the place where the senators have their meetings if they're going out of session or if the governor has a reception. This is an often place where the legislature will meet together and have it. It's a beautiful room. There's a portrait of Calvin Coolidge in there who I believe came up through the mass legislature before he was elected president. Uh, and another thing they have in this room which is that all of the former Senate presidents have the option of having their portrait drawn and posted or uh, hung from the Senate reading room. So as you can see here the most recent President of the Senate, Robert Travellini, who left in 2007, has his portrait, and the infamous William M. Bulger, who was President of the Senate, I believe, longer than anyone else, 1978 to 1996, uh, is, uh, is uh, also has his portrait hung up here. That's uh, debatable uh, whether we wish to laud that or not, but that's for another time. But so this is the uh, the room. It's a really wonderful room. There are a lot of receptions we have in here through the years. Um, and press conferences and things are held. So you may get a chance to see this, but again, this is one of the older parts of the building and really one of the more beautiful rooms. This is the outside of the Senate chambers and it's my favorite view you get of Boston from the State House and up here. And as you can see, this is Hancock Hill, which John Hancock gave to the people of Massachusetts to build the State House. This is the original portion of the building. And as you can see, this is kind of an interesting view because we get a back view of those statues and the stairwell, the main entrance to the State House. At the same time as you get to see all of Boston Common and the skyline of more or less Tremont Street uh, in front of us uh, and the shopping district, Downtown Crossing is sort of where we're looking at right here. So this is quite a good view. You won't get this view of Boston any other place but here. And many people, unless you take a chance to come up to the State House and take the tour with me or with the tour guides, you won't get a chance to see this. So I wanted to make sure people got a chance to see it.